Hey everyone, welcome back to week 22 New Grammar. I um, am missing you all so much, but I hope that these videos are proving to be helpful to you. And um, I hope that week 21 was also helpful, helpful and also a, a tool that you could use um, as you review uh, not only for last week, but into this week and beyond as we have only after this, crazy to think, two more weeks before we're done our CC school year. So I wanted to start up a little differently today before we jump into their new grammar and actually read a devotion to you um, in a devotion that my kids go through and it's called Jesus Calling. And I really felt like for tomorrow, March 24th, um, it was just so applicable. We can apply it to what we're going through right now with um, how different time the time is for us, how different our days are being used, how much we have to stay at home to stay safe. And so in, uh, just sit tight with me. I'm going to read through this devotion and um, share a little bit of scripture. We're going to pray and then we're going to jump right into like we did last week into our geography. So if you don't have your black and white maps out already, get those out with a dry erase marker and um, be ready to jump into that. But let me share this with you um, before we jump in there. This is a time in your life when we have to learn to let go. You think about that. We have to learn to let go of a lot of things. Sports, our sports have changed. If those of you who play on a team, um, we have to let go of being able to gather together in a CC community. We've had to let go of visiting friends. I miss you guys all so much. I would love to be able to see you all and meet at a park, but things have looked so differently. So we're so certainly in a season of having to let go. And ultimately, we have to let go of control in this season because we can't control what's happening. In order to let go of something that is really precious to us, we need to rest in the Lord's presence where we are then complete in his presence. Take time to bask in the light of the Lord's love for us. And as we relax more and more on those thoughts, we grasp, we let that grasp of control go and releasing our prized possessions or what we're missing out on into the Lord's care. We can feel secure even in the midst of such drastic changes. The awareness of the Lord's presence is always there. He is never leaving us. The one who never leaves is the same one who never changes. I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What a promise that is to us. And as we release more and more of our things and our worries and our control into the Lord's care, we can always remember and never forget that he never lets go of our hand. He's always there through all of it, the good and the bad and the scary and the uncertain. How blessed are we? Herein lies our security with him, which no one and no circumstance can ever take from us. And I'm going to read three pieces of scripture to you, and I hope that they really help you and stick with you, uh, as there is so much that is not in our control. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. And that's from Psalms 89, 15. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Hebrews 13, 8. I love that. He's never changing and he's always there. And lastly, for I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. That's Isaiah 41, 13. And I hang tight to those. And I thought that that was just so applicable. And I hope that this helps you start your day, that we have nothing to fear or worry, worry about. He is always with us. He loves us. He knows the desires of our heart. He knows he's He's close to the brokenhearted, whatever it is, fill in the blank. Um, but those verses are just incredible. So thanks for letting me share that with you. We can bow our heads together and we're going to pray over this morning as we jump into new grammar. Dear Heavenly Father, I am just so thankful, Lord, for who you are, how incredible you are, and how steadfast you are, and that you have the promises that you never leave us or forsake us. You are always there through thick and thin through the joyous and the uncertain and the hard times, Lord, that we endure. And um, I am just so grateful, Lord, for who you are, that you've called all of us to know you in such an intimate way. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, again, for the technology that can span um, 
such a great distance between us, Lord, that we can still come together in a way that brings you honor and glory, um, that we can commit these amazing things, these things that we're going to learn in our new grammar, that we get to commit them to our minds, Lord, that um, you've given us that duty and that job, and it is truly an honor. And so we pray uh, that we make you proud in all that we do, Lord, that we, as the children of this community, honor their parents and their moms as their teachers in this time of hunkering down and being together endlessly day after day without much reprieve or ability to leave our own homes. And so Lord, I pray for the kids that they are able to just go above and beyond in blessing um, their families with obedience and kind words and loving gestures. And Lord, I just pray hedges of protection around the families and also for these moms at the helm of this education, Lord, that you are with them, that you are their sustenance, that you are uh, in their control, Lord, that you never leave us and that we can hang tight to those promises. Thank you again, Lord, for all that you are and all that you do for us every day. We pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. Okay. We're jumping into geography and we have some super fun stuff. Uh, so get out your like we did last week, your black and white line maps, if you have them. Uh, also, some of you may have the geography triviums. These are also very helpful, though we want you, this is good for introducing, but we want you to be able to recall information, um, you know, off of the black and white maps as well. Is that upside down? Am I giving you that? Yes, I am. Off the black and white line maps, okay? So I will send this out like I did last week, although my printer is uh, losing ink and I have obviously not been to the store. So um, we're going to jump in here with our new geography and I'm going to, I've labeled it here for you. You will have this at home and also you can label these on your black and white line map. So let's look. This week we're in Oceania and you can see I wrote the word bonus right next to Oceania. And so I like in my class to give just a little bit extra challenges. I have usually taught the master's class. So if you are not in the master's class and you feel like you're up for this bonus and this challenge, listen closely. I would like this week for whoever wants to dive into Oceania. What is that? What does that mean? What are we talking about? Yes, we're talking about these geographical locations, but give me the definition of Oceania. Look it up. And if you can email, your mom can either email me what you've written about Oceania or text me a picture of you holding your paper that you wrote about Oceania. I'm going to figure out some little bonus system to reward you guys for going above and beyond. I will also do this for maps. Anybody who's making their own map or tracing their map with labels, please, if you're up for the challenge, do it. Have your mom send a picture of me, text it to me of you holding the map or maps if you're up for the challenge, and we're going to come up with some sort of a bonus system um, because this is really what I would love for all of you guys to be doing is making your own maps. Um, so we're talking about Oceania. As you can see on the list, we have Australia, Great Barrier Reef, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and Indonesia. So looking at the map here, I'm just going to show you these locations. So we have Australia. Okay, Australia. And if you want to put on your map an A for Australia, then here on the map you can see this big, kind of looks like a, a worm with a tail. This is the Great Barrier Reef. That's something on Mrs. Olson's bucket list. I would love to see the Great Barrier Reef, and I would love to snorkel there. So take a look this week maybe and research the Great Barrier Reef. What makes that so special? So we have Australia, the Great Barrier Reef. Then we have New Zealand. New Zealand are these two little islands down here, off, kind of off the coast of Australia. So we have New Zealand. So again, we have Australia, the Great Barrier Reef, and we have New Zealand. Now you can abbreviate these. You can just draw lines on them if you're younger and that's easier for you. You can put the letters, like I said, abbreviations inside with an A. That's fine. So Australia, Great Barrier Reef, New Zealand. And then we have Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is right here. Now, interesting, I want you to see that I have labeled Indonesia and everything that is uh, considered Indonesia, I colored in and have lines. Now, it's interesting to look at this island right here because it looks to me that Indonesia is also shared with Papua New Guinea. Another bonus for anybody who's old enough that wants to look into this further, what happened here? What happened that there's a divide here? It also reminds me to other geography we've done this year, like Haiti, which is near to my heart, to the Olson's heart. 
Uh, we love Haiti and we um and and how Haiti is similar to this that there's a line down the center and it's divided between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So maybe this week anybody who's up for it or moms if you want to dig in deeper find out why this divide happened. It's super interesting and also um, maybe looking into the India East Company. We've talked about that before if you've been in CC long enough. So there's a lot to do here in learning based even off of our geography. So let's do this again. We have Australia, Great Barrier Reef, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and Indonesia. Let's do that again. We have Australia, the Great Barrier Reef, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and Indonesia. So copy those on your map. For those of you in the younger class, I also have a song for you. Let's see if I can pull that up. My speaker is actually dying, so I hope it hangs on there long enough for us. Actually, I have to say, you guys are probably going to like this song because it is Moana, Moana themed. Anybody who loves Moana, I know this is going to be a hit in my house because I have a couple Moana lovers. Okay, let me connect here. Here we go. And I'm going to play this song for you. And it goes a little bit out of order, but that's okay. It still covers all of the same material and it's okay to go out of order. So we actually, in this song, Start with New Zealand. So as we listen to the song, let's look at our maps and we'll do it together. And I'll send this out. Geography Week 22, Oceania, New Zealand, Australia, Great Barrier Reef, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Oceania. Pretty good. That one is going to stick. So we will send, I will send out that attachment. Listen to that song. It's so helpful. And like I said, it's okay that it goes out of order a little bit. Um, but that covers our geography for week 22, just like that. And don't forget the bonus, Oceania. And also looking into the British East Company or the East Company uh, or the routes used along this geography. Um, and what is the, that divide about that we talked about on the map, right? With Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. So take a look at those things. This is just digging in deeper and you guys are able to do that. You're all so smart. Okay. Moving on from our geography, let's look at our English coordinating conjunctions. Now we have what we call an acronym here and you can see that it says fan boys, fan boys. And oftentimes in essentials class, we'll literally say when we're talking about coordinating conjunctions, fanboys, and what that stands for. Each letter stands for something. So for and nor, but, or, yet, so. For and nor, but, or, yet, so. Fanboys or coordinating conjunctions. We talked about coordinating con conjunctions last week. So this ties in really well. What is a coordin coordinating conjunction? And here is uh, a song that is going to cover this very well. Here we go, listen closely. Fanboys is all you need to know For and nor but or yet so Fanboys is all you need to know For and nor but or yet so Critical battery, please charge So my speaker has just died but there you go, coordinating conjunctions, fanboys, is all you need to know, for and nor, but, or yet, so. We're going to listen to that one more time. Or yet, so, fanboys is all you need to know, for and nor, but, or yet, so. Very good, and we will also send the coordinating conjunction song out. Now let's move on to our Latin. Latin's the same as it was last week. We've seen this two other weeks in our um, entire school year, so this should be a nice review for us considering we had it last week. Now remember I talked about the triggers and how it helps everybody in my house as they studied Latin into the challenge years 
that to tie something that's eas easily recalled. And we talked about last week that we have the first conjugation ending plu perfect tense, like plu we. Remember I said when you walk outside or you're outside at the farm and you go out to the pen and you see a ram and you think, oh, it's so stinky, plu we, right? So we jump right into aram. First conjugation endings plu perfect tense. Aram, eras, erat, eramis, eratus, erant. First conjugation, plu perfect tense. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. So first conjugation endings, plu perfect tense. Aram, eram, eras, erat, eramis, eratus, erant. First conjugation, plu perfect tense far-fetched sometimes to think that that would actually work, but it does. So use that. Another step further for any parents who are looking to dive into this deeper, um, you can ask your children, what's the, uh, this is first person, second person, third person, singular and plural, and you can say, what is the first person plural, and have the children say, Aramis, we had. This is a good way to start thinking in those challenge years and how to prepare for that. We do that in my foundations class. I'll ask the kids. Uh, I've done this even with Heath, who is seven years old. So you can do this and start having them think about this outside the box once now we're at the stage of having it memorized. So that is our Latin for today. Now, I know you're probably so excited to wonder why I have Darth Vader up here, but you know what? Hang tight. We're going to talk about Darth Vader and how he ties into our science. Well, let's jump down into math. Um, so let's look at the map. The commutative law for addition states. This is so easy. A plus B equals B plus A. Look what I'm doing here. I'm putting the same letters. I'm just flipping the order. So the commutative law for addition states that A plus B equals B plus A. That's going to really be easy for me to remember for the uh, commutative law of multiplication. So the commutative law for multiplication states that A times B equals B times A. Let's do that again. The commutative law for addition states that A plus B equals B plus A. The, uh, I'm sorry, the commutative law for multiplication states that A times B equals B times A. Let's do that together, to get together again. The commutative law for addition states that A plus B equals B plus A. The commutative law for mul multiplication states that A times B equals B times A. Very good. Keep practicing these. There's a few of them. We have last week, this week, and two more weeks to go. So let, memorize these. Keep chanting them, repeating them, okay? So it looks like we've covered most. We have a couple things left here to cover. Let's look at our timeline. We have North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go through these and then I will introduce the hand motions. So we have North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Korean War, Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement, Jim and Elizabeth Elliot, Missionaries to Ecuador, the Antarctic Treaty, the Vietnam War, U.S. astronauts walk on the moon. Okay, so the hand motions for North Atlantic Treaty Organization. We're going to make an O for organization. We also, there's another name for North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Does anybody know it? Shout it out. I can't hear you but it's also known as NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Okay, so we're gonna make an O with our hands and we're gonna go around like this for organization. So we have a little O, but we're making a big O. So the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. We have the Korean War. So we're gonna take our open hand, our right hand, and kind of come across and make a fist, okay? The Korean War. And then we have Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement. And Martin Luther was an incredible human being, but he also gave a lot of public speeches. And so we're gonna hold a microphone and we're gonna put our hand up in the air. Like we're speaking with fear, uh, with, well, I, I don't even know. I was gonna say fear, fiercely speaking. Maybe there we go, an L-Y adverb. So Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. So let's go over that again. We have North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Korean War, Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement. Then we have Jim and Elizabeth Elliot. You're gonna make a heart and then a Bible, like moving forward, okay? So we have Jim and Elizabeth Elliot, missionaries to Ecuador. We have the Antarctic Treaty. We're gonna make the peace sign. The Antarctic Treaty. 
And the Vietnam War, you're going to make a little gun. I think all the boys right now are probably loving that. And the, um, and the Vietnam War. So the Antarctic Treaty, the Vietnam War. And then U.S. astronauts walk on the moon. So we're going to move a little bit slowly, like on the moon. There's not a lot of gravity, so it kind of moves more, much slower, so like that. Okay, so let's start from the beginning, and we can sing it together. So, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Korean War, Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement, Jim and Elizabeth Elliot, missionaries to Ecuador, the Antarctic Treaty, the Vietnam War, U.S. astronauts walk on the moon. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's do that one more time, okay? Hand motions are very helpful, so make sure you're, you're learning these. This is a huge timeline song, about 13 and a half minutes long, if I'm recalling that correctly. So these hand motions are very helpful, and if you ever go for Memory Masters, I've seen this so many times. The hand motions are actually what help recall the information. So that's why we do them, to help tie that together. So we have the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Korean War, Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement, Jim and Elizabeth Elliot, missionaries to Ecuador, the Antarctic Treaty, the Vietnam War, U.S. astronauts walk on the moon. Very good. Okay, so practice that. If you haven't in a while listened to the whole song, do that while you have all this time. Um, review that, listen to it, play it out loud on a speaker, dance around crazy with your family. Who knows? Have fun. Okay, now we get to finally find out why Darth Vader is here in our science this week. So this week we are asking what are some ways light is observed? And something that is so important that CC teaches is that when somebody asks you a question, it is so important to respond in a complete sentence. And how we would go about doing that, what we'd say, what are some ways light is observed? Some ways that light is observed is by reflection, refraction, spectrum, wave, particle. And so listen closely to the song I have for you. It is Darth Vader's theme song. Listen closely. What are some ways light is observed? Some ways that light is observed. Reflection, refraction, spectrum, wave, particle. These are some ways that light is observed. I went off key there for a second. All right, let's do that again. So what are some ways light is observed? What are some ways that light is observed? Some of the ways that light is observed. Reflection, refraction, spectrum, wave, particle. These are some ways that light is observed. I have this also in an MP3, and I will send this to you as well as an attachment. Pretty fun though, thanks. Thank you, Darth Vader. Okay, looking up at our history sentence, this is our last little bit of um, our new grammar for week 22. Tell me about the fall of communism. I'm gonna read it to you, we'll go over the hand motions, and then we'll listen to it together. So in 1989, the communist dictators began to fall in Eastern Europe when Soviet General Secretary Gorbachev refused to send them military aid. Okay, and so we have uh, in 1989, so we're gonna put up our both hands with four fingers. In, in 1980, and then we're gonna just pop up your thumb, nine. So in 1989, the communist dictators, and dictators are often people who are just the boss of everything and nobody else can speak into to them or give them guidance. So I thought like this, they're big and tough men. The communist dictators began to fall in Eastern Europe, because they both start with an E, Eastern Europe, when Soviet general Secretary, we're going to make a big S for Soviet, and this is a bit of a mouthful. When Soviet General Secretary Gorbachev refused to send them military aid, and it's like we're giving a handout, okay? So let's listen to this together. It goes a bit quickly. Um, let's see here. I'm sorry my speaker's not on because that helps so much. 
Tell me about the fall of communism. In 1989, the communist dictators began to fall in Eastern Europe. And Soviet General Secretary Gorbachev refused to send them military aid. Let's do it again. 1989, the communist dictators began to fall in Eastern Europe. And Soviet General Secretary Gorbachev refused to send them military aid. Let's do it one more time together, okay? And I also have, I will send this, um, this MP3 as well as an attachment. So let's do that again. Get your hands ready. Tell me about the fall of communism. In 1989, the communist dictators began to fall in Eastern Europe. So we The military aid in 1989. The communist dictators began to fall in Eastern Europe. And Soviet General Secretary Gorbachev refused to send the military aid. Okay. Well, that wraps up our week 22. I, um, I pray that you guys are having a wonderful week. I pray that um, you find peace and joy that can only come from the Lord and um, that you are uh, able to relinquish all the control of everything being so uh, unknown and so different these days. Um, and think back to the scripture and the devotion that we shared at the beginning here. I'm praying for you all. Please reach out if you have any questions. And remember those bonuses and maps. You make a map, please have mom take your picture, send it to me. I'm going to keep track of everything I receive and we'll come up with some cool reward and, and mail them to you if um, we aren't able to get together as a community. Have so much fun making your catapults this week. I'm so excited to hear about those and um, keep listening to the wonderful uh, classical and um, romantic period uh, that we are listening to in our in our classic arts and thank you so much to karen bergman for um your beautiful write-ups have a wonderful week love you all god bless